Hey guys, welcome to Parker Mod Plays Subnautica. Yeah, that was pretty crazy, wasn't it? We had a pretty busy last episode, and we're looking forward to a whole lot more of that this episode, including building the Cyclops. So stick around and enjoy. This is Life Pod 4. We've landed close to the Aurora. Flotation device is active, but we've got some big old fish in the water with us. I don't know how long we're going to last. We're close to the crash site, so bring radiation protection. Four out. Alright guys, so we're going to have a lot of resource gathering. Um, I'm going to try to speed through a lot of this. Resource gathering is pretty boring, but there's there's little tips, I guess, that you can find out about where to find stuff. So, these metal salvages, I don't recall if I have explained in previous videos, but the metal salvage obviously breaks down into titanium. Um, mine the caves for those guys, for obvious reasons. And there's another one. And there's another. And another. <laughs> yeah, it's a predatory region there. Anyway, you can see I've got a couple of uh, outdoor grow beds I just passed there. Here we're just building stuff. There's always uh, breaking down the metal, salvage, that sort of thing. So this is a multi-purpose room. Uh, they will be kind of the foundation of your base. Yes, you can stack them right on top of each other. That's really cool. Uh, put ladders between them to access them. These things here are reinforcement plates, and you need them when your hull gets too weak, and you really need them as you start building bases at deeper depths. So I just get used to putting them on, but as you build bigger bases further down in the depths, then you will need more of those reinforcement plates. Here I'm just putting more power. Restored. <clears throat> more power. Systems online. The more stuff you build in your base, especially stuff that consumes power, um, obviously the more storage you're going to need. So uh, your Seamoth, I don't think I've mentioned this as well either, when your Seamoth or your Prawn Suit are docked at your moon pool, uh, they, they do recharge, so they will now use base power. Just able to explore, online. find more resources. Okay, this biome here is called the Underwater Islands, uh, or as they've been known to be called as well, the Floating Islands. But uh, what they are is just used to be islands on the surface that have kind of sunk, but they're being kind of suspended in midair by the floating nodules. And the resources you'll get in this area are Ruby. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Watch your depth on the sea moth. Got uh, lots of the bone sharks here, so you really have to keep your pot in repair. You'll see I'm at 36 health right now, 36%. So I had to do a little, uh, oof, lots of them in the area there. Everywhere you go in this zone, there's bone sharks. So I had to go back to the surface to actually do a repair. So that's what I'm doing here. Keep your Seamoth up to snuff. If it gets in, on, like in low health or bad health, then uh, just go do a repair on it. So the one big thing about this area is actually this wreck that you can dive. And yes, my Seamoth is again taking damage in this area. So just take your time exploring. Mind the bone sharks, obviously. Just dodge them. They don't move too, too quick. And the entrance to this is uh, 
on the side here. You'll see it in a minute. Right there, in from one of the two ends, you'll see it. So what I do is I just shine the Seamoth light in the opening, and then go exploring. And yes, you can open these doors. I'm sure you probably figured that out in some of the other wrecks you've dived, so... Give her a push and go in deeper. I had a bone shark show up and start attacking my sea moth. I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to blow up and strand me down here. And then he got really violent. So I thought, why not? Let's scan him. <laughs> Can't open those. Suit grappling arm. Emergency. Starvation imminent. Seek calorie so I had to take a break from this dive because I was starving, as you can tell. So I came back. Finished the dive later. I didn't bring any food with me on this particular exploration, uh, exploratory trip. I found a new wreck that I hadn't dived yet on the way back. So I figured. I'll take note of where that is and I'll come back to it. Welcome aboard, Captain. Docked the sea moth. Shot upstairs quickly, grabbed some food, a little Vital bit of health. Stabilizing. Bit of water. Grab a couple more. In this case the Chinese potatoes. Did a bit more building while I was here. I needed better food resources, so put a couple potted plants here and plant some potatoes in them. Some of the Chinese potatoes. The potatoes, by the way, you just pick them up and a fully grown plant will give you a four or five, something like that I think it is. And then you just take the seeds or the potatoes, I guess, and you plant them. You can do the same thing with these acid mushrooms. So an acid mushroom, you simply hit it with a knife when it's full grown and it gives you four of the seed, acid mushroom seeds as you can see there. And then you just left click on the planter to open it and plant all those seeds and that's how you reproduce your acid mushrooms for when you're making batteries and power cells. So I wanted to do the uh, the hull upgrade on this sea moth and you can pause the video here to read the description if you want. So there you go, the hull reinforcement. And then we were on our way back. So I decided to come to stop by this dive first and uh, there's two entrances. One you can swim in and the other one you have to cut open. So I went for the cut open one and yes that was a stalker glitching through the uh, unit above me. But it could get me if it tried. You'll see it in a second. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> so yeah, it's open above me so it could have swum around and bit me, but it didn't see me, I guess. A couple things to scan in here. And yes, he's still there, so I just figured I'd jet to the sea moth. It's fine. So now we're back at the other wreck in the underwater island zone and uh, exploring further. You can see I'm pretty low on oxygen here. Anytime you're cave diving or wreck diving or anything like that where you're in a confined diving space, you shouldn't ever push it. If you're uh, getting low on air, you know, 45 seconds and that sort of range, and you're a ways into a wreck or a ways into a cave, turn around, head her back on out. Unless, you know, you're already like a minute from the entrance or something, in which case you should already be on your way back. But in this case, you know, 22 seconds isn't too bad, uh, it's plenty of time, but you can very easily get caught on things on the way back out. Some of these wrecks are pretty tight, and if you get caught on something, you're going to have, you know, one, two seconds, you know, maybe five seconds added onto your escape time, and that can really add up if that happens a couple of times when you're trying to get out, you know, glitching on things and you're not flying through openings as you should, then you can really get caught in a hurry, so... So we've got a couple prawn suit fragments in here. In the next episode, we're uh, we're probably going to head into the Aurora again and get the full prawn suit. 
But in the meantime, we've got all kinds of prawn suit upgrades. Swim charge fins, they'll charge whatever tool you're currently holding as you swim around, so that's pretty neat. This here's just an exit out to nothing. No, it just gets you outside again, but uh, I didn't really see the point. I always, I always go back through making sure I didn't miss anything, and in this case I ran out of air too quickly so we didn't spend a whole lot of time, but quick dodge to get back out again. Captain. And underneath this wreck, there's uh, a bit of a cave system. So there's lithium under there, ruby, uh, shale, I believe shale outcrops, and limestone outcrops. Uh, so, and that was a really close one. I didn't quite see him until the last second, but he kind of didn't see me, so that was good. So yeah, just explore. Uh, pick up anything you can find that uh, is worthwhile. You'll need every bit of everything that they put in the game. It's all there for a reason, so just pick them up if you've got inventory space to do it. So we headed back. Welcome aboard, Captain. Yeah, and this section's running, I believe, at six times speed. Just because there's a lot of just messing around, inventory management, that sort of thing. So I didn't want to bore you guys watching at all, but that is something that you'll spend a lot of time doing in this game. Building lockers, organizing inventory, putting things away, getting inventory items you need to build things. So it all takes time, but it's all good. Now for most of you, this is already a given. You already understand this, but what I'm making right now is bleach. I just did a quick run outside to get some coral and you need salt and coral to create bleach and then you can create dis disinfected water with that bleach. Um, now the difference between them is plus 30 for disinfected water instead of using bladder fish because that only gives you plus 20 water. I always try to do just one room that I keep all my resources in for the most part. So in this case, I have a multi-purpose room, and I just start building lockers all along the wall. Uh, some bases, I hang them on the wall with the smaller lockers, but I do like these larger lockers. They do have a quite a bit larger capacity, so I'll often prefer them over the smaller wall hanging versions. So here I am, out cruising the grassy plateaus, and what do I find? but the last Cyclops hole fragment I need to be able to build the Cyclops. So now I'm totally stoked. And you'll find all kinds of those. I think I was out on a quartz hunt, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, kind of in this grassy plateaus and uh, more, more regularly in the mushroom forest, which is kind of the, the area I'm heading into right now. Uh, there's a modification station fragment, which is awesome. But that mushroom forest... Oh, right. Okay, so I wanted, to, I wanted to leave this part in here for you. Look at this. Game over. That was close. Not cool. So back to what we were saying. Um, the mushroom forest is where you'll find, I believe, everything you need to build the Cyclops. The hole, the bridge fragments, and the engine fragments. Everything you need you can find in the mushroom forest. Okay, so a while back uh, we picked up something called the Ultra Glide Fins and uh, unlocked the blueprint for them. So we just got the modification station br blueprint, so that's what we're building right now. We need that in order to build those Ultra Glide Fins and get even more speed out of our swimming. So that is now built. We can do a Thermoblade, 
put a battery on a knife and you've got a, a knife that actually cooks food when you kill it. So you can swim up to any fish, right click on it, and it'll kill the fish and cook it for you all in one shot. So now I've had a look at what I need to build the fins and uh, we'll, we'll go gather the materials together and build some of the prerequisites so that we can build our Ultra Glide fins. Now a quick note I'll give you is you must have the fins in your inventory, in your carried inventory. They can't be on your feet in order to build these Ultra Glide fins. But there they are. So it's manufacturing them now and they will auto equip and we now have Ultra Glide fins so we will be able to swim another I believe 15% faster than we were able to even before. Okay, so you're going to be all excited and head over to the vehicle bay. I've got all my Cyclops blueprints, all the, all the pieces I needed to build the Cyclops, but there's still a lot of work to do. It takes quite a few resources. This is one of the, actually I think it is the biggest item you can build in the game. So uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit of work. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time gathering resources. We need more titanium. In fact, the total raw material list is as follows. One creep vine seed cluster. 2 copper, 2 silver, 2 table coral sample, 3 gold, 3 lead, 3 stalker teeth, 6 quartz, 6 lithium, and 30 titanium. So it is quite a large raw material list that has to be acquired before you can build the cyclops. And then of course piecing together all the individual parts you make 3 titanium ingots and then you create 3 plasteel ingots with that. And then to create the enameled glass you got to take 2 quartz, turn them into glass and then turn the stalker tooth and glass into the enameled glass. Lubricant is pretty straightforward, uh, just the creep vine seed clusters required, uh, and you need an advanced wiring kit, uh, three lead, um, and then of course the mobile vehicle bay in order to create the cyclops. So it's quite an extensive project. All right, guys, here it is, the moment of truth. Well, there you have it, the largest pilotable vehicle in the game, the Cyclops. Are you as excited as I am about taking her for a spin? <laughs> well, hope you enjoyed that. We're not going to have time in this episode to uh, take her on her maiden voyage. But stick around and we will... Put her through her paces in the next video for sure. All right, well, if you enjoyed that, definitely hit that subscribe button for me. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this, and I will absolutely see you in episode seven. Thanks, guys.